How would you like to win your very own Thermaltake Core P3? In partnership with Thermaltake, I'm giving away three of these beautiful, awesome cases. To enter, sign up at our forum at hardwareunbox.com, post a picture of your current rig, your specs, and quickly tell me what you want to do with the Core P3. Good luck and enjoy the video. The time has come to benchmark the new Radeon RX 470 and benchmark it with Shell. For those of you expecting some 20 plus games tested, I've got to apologise, you'll have to settle for a dozen this time around. Unfortunately, I only found out the RX 470 was incoming late last week and my sample arrived less than 24 hours before the deadline. The good news though was because I did have almost a week's notice that the RX 470 was being released today, I was able to do a bit of planning, which resulted in quite a bit of pre-testing. The key part of the plan was to change my test system for these lower end slash mid-range graphics cards to something that would closer reflect the setups those shopping for a sub $200 GPU would be running. This meant dumping the overclocked Core i7-6700K system for a more affordable Core i3 rig. In the end, I went with the Core i3-6100T, which is roughly three times cheaper than the 6700K. I deliberately opted for the low voltage model as it comes clocked at just 3.2 GHz and will better reflect the performance of locked processors. Typically, graphics cards are benchmarked using high-end rigs to avoid system bottlenecks and this makes a lot of sense. That said, for this review, I wanted to try doing things a little different to the norm. After all, you're going to see countless RX 470 reviews go live alongside mine, and the vast majority will no doubt feature a Core i7 test rig. Additionally, the response to my video where I tested the RX 480 and GTX 1060 on 6-year-old AMD and Intel computers was very well received. So with almost a week up my sleeve, I took 9 graphics cards in the sub $300 price range and tested them at 1080p in a dozen new and relatively new AAA titles. Now that we have the RX 470 on hand, it'll be interesting to see how it compares. For more information regarding the RX 470, please check out the AMD Radeon RX 460 and RX 470 preview video I put together last week. In that video, I speculated that the RX 470 would cost $180, despite almost all news reports claiming a $150 price tag. Quite a few of you guys felt the RX 470 would come in at $150, but frankly, I couldn't see it happening. I'm not expecting this new GPU to be much slower than the RX 480, and at $150, the RX 470 wouldn't just be the buy of the year, it would also have heavily cannibalized the RX 480 sales. The $180 US MSRP means down under the RX 470 should cost around $240 based on a rough currency conversion. That said, the cheapest price the RX 480 is being advertised for in Australia is $360 while you still have to pay $440 to find one in stock. Based on that information, I expect the cheapest RX 470 will cost us Aussies around $320, which is roughly what I paid a few days ago for the R9-380X used for comparison in this video. All graphics cards tested are reference models, and those that aren't have had their bias reflashed to meet the reference clock speeds. AMD provided the ASUS RX 470 Strix Edition for review, which does feature a decent factory overclock. So for the purposes of this review, I've downclocked the ASUS card to the reference clock frequencies to keep the results fair. For that reason, I haven't included overclocking in this video, and Instead, at a later date, I'll do a full review of the Strix Edition and provide factory and custom overclocking results. Okay, so that gets the important stuff out of the way. Let's get to the results, shall we? We'll begin our benchmarks with Batman Arkham Knight. Here you can see the 470 managed to help the 85 FPS, meaning it was within 7% of its bigger brother, the RX 480. This is one of the few titles too where the RX 480 was ahead of the 1060, and as a result, the 470 was within 6% of the Nvidia card. Compared to the 380X of the previous generation, we're now looking at a card that's 10 FPS faster. Again, the 470 performed extremely well, this time in Black Ops 3. Here it was good for 92 FPS, making it just 3 FPS shy of the 480. This time, however, the 1060 was more true to its average relative performance and was 12% faster at 105 FPS. This is the game where the 470 lay its biggest beating on the 380X of yesteryear, trouncing it by 23%. Our Doom tests were conducted using Vulcan, and here the 470's performance was rather impressive. It was able to eclipse the much more expensive GTX 1060 by 4 FPS, but was 15% behind the RX 480 and the 390 this time. The 380X again trailed behind, this time by 20%. Next up was Far Cry Primal, and here the 470 was within 3 frames of the 480 under these conditions, which was obviously pretty negligible. It was however 15% slower than the 1060, although both cards provided very smooth gaming experiences. In Shadow of Mordor, the 480 was able to extend its lead again, this time out to 14%. The 1060 was also 18 FPS ahead, meaning the 470 was 20% slower. In Mirror's Edge Catalyst, on the medium quality settings, we were able to extract a smooth 74 FPS on the RX 470. This was quite close to the performance of the 480, which was only 4 FPS ahead on 78. 
The 1060 led the pack again, and this time the 470 was 21% slower. The stronger cards in our testing pack were possibly reaching a CPU bottleneck here in Overwatch on the ultra quality setting. Here the 1060, 480 and 470 were all within 4 frames of each other, and the 380X was 7% behind the 470 specifically. We tested Rise of the Tomb Raider in DirectX 12 with the very high quality settings, and the 470 managed a smooth 84 FPS, which was great to see. This was 15% faster than the 380X and 10% behind the RX 480. Star Wars Battlefront was an interesting one. Here the top 3 cards all seemed to hit the same bottleneck at 107 FPS, and the 470 was 18% behind on 88 FPS. The 380X though was even further behind at 79. In the division, the 470 was slightly faster than the much more power hungry R9 390 with 68 FPS. It was 12% slower than its bigger brother from the same generation, and 14% behind the mid range and more expensive 1060 from the green team. The Witcher 3 was one of the games where the 470 was quite close to the 480, this time just 7% behind. Behind. It was also only 11% slower than the 1060, which is a good showing. Compared with some of the last generation's cards, it smoked the 1060 by 50% and was 17% faster than the 380X. This time, I tested Total War Warhammer in DirectX 12, and the R9 390 was king of the hill. The margins weren't huge though, and the 470 fell only 2 FPS behind the RX 480 and 3 FPS behind the 1060. The 380 and 380X were all in the same ballpark too though, with 59 and 60 FPS respectively. The total system power consumption on average over 20 minutes of gameplay at 1080p was a relatively low 201 watts. This was 17 watts less than the RX 480 reference card, which seems about spot on based on the performance. As mentioned, the RX 470 we're using here is of the ASUS Strix variety, whereas the RX 480 is only the honestly pretty poorly cooled reference card, and the results speak for themselves. ASUS seems to have devised a pretty damn effective cooler, and as you can see, after 20 minutes of gameplay, it was still sitting at a comparatively icy cool 59 degrees. This is compared to a coffee brewing 81 degrees from the 480 reference card, and 71 degrees from the GTX 1060 Founders Edition. Interesting results for sure, but I've got to say that they're quite in line with what I was expecting based on the specifications we had before I finally got the card and was able to test it. The power consumption is low, but also in line with the performance scene, and the temperatures maintained by the Strix card are actually really impressive. Now let's jump into the part of the review I personally find most interesting and useful, the direct card comparisons. In a direct comparison with the RX 380, here you can see it was on average 20% faster at 1080p. There's quite a spread of results though, ranging quite steadily from 5% all the way up to 35%. I was really interested to see how the 380X and 470 stacked up, as they're two cars from different generations that feature the exact same core configuration. As you can see, the new Polaris card is 13% faster on average through our dozen games tested, and again there's quite a spread of results. In our Total War DirectX 12 test, the cards were only separated by 2%, whereas in Black Ops 3, the 470 was able to pull away by 23%. Obviously, this is another comparison that I, and most likely you, are very interested to see. Compared directly to the RX 480 reference card, the 470 was on average only 8% slower, as I thought it might be. Due to our testing conditions, there are a couple of games where a system bottleneck was present, and this is why Overwatch, for instance, was within 1%. This 8% average, however, is why I knew this card wouldn't be coming in at a price as low as $150. US dollars. The new RX 470 put a fair beating on the GTX 960, and at its closest, it was still 19% ahead. On average though, it was a whopping 42% faster, meaning the 470 would be a significant upgrade for GTX 960 users. These cards are really in totally different price categories, but it was interesting to see that in a number of titles, the difference when paired with a lower end processor was quite small. In a third of our games tested, the RX 470 was only 6% slower or less, and in the case of Doom running in Vulcan, it was actually faster. This meant that overall, the average was 12% slower, and the largest margin was in Rise of the Tomb Raider, where the 470 was 24% slower than the 1060. AMD are pitching the RX 470 as the perfect 1080p gaming solution, and having seen an average of 88 FPS over our 12 games tested, I'd have to agree. Coming into the cost per frame of just $2.05, the RX 470 is now the new cost per frame king, and at 1080p, it looks like there's no better buy. These figures might look slightly different with a higher end CPU, as in a couple of games there was a system bottleneck present, but these instances were kind of insignificant because performance was already well over 100 FPS. The 380X was next best in terms of cost per frame, but the new 470 still wiped the floor with a saving of 29 cents per frame. So unless availability for the 470 is shocking, you use a high refresh rate monitor, or there's a large price discrepancy in your region for 1080p gaming, it seems like there'll be no better choice than AMD's new RX 470. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. 
To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unbox channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.